<clears throat> and uh, I just want to talk about, I talk about sin a lot, don't I? And I've admitted I'm speaking to myself when I'm up here. It's not good, is it? Um, I want to talk about sin this morning and about perhaps sometimes the way we try and deal with it ourselves <clears throat> and, um, and the way that God deals with it. So I've got uh, these two jars with some water in here. This represents your life, all your activity, your job, all the things that you're involved in. This represents Jesus. This is you. That's all you are. You're just a load of hankies, a lot of you. A load of hankies. <laughs> So this is you. So you've got up one morning. This is a day in the life of the Christian, okay? Not me. Not me. So you've got up one morning. You've had your quiet time. God's happy with you. You're happy with God. Everything's unky-dory. The sun's shining. Off into your life you go, okay? You're off to work, wherever you're going off to work. Um, so you're on the way to work, and um, you've got a long journey. A bit like Owen had this morning, a long way from Lincoln. Somebody cuts you up on the roundabout, and the thoughts that come into your mind don't reflect what you could really say to him as a Christian. So, oh dear, oh dear, we've already, already, I've not even got there yet, and I've already messed everything up. Oh dear. Then we get mad about something else. Then we say something we shouldn't. Then we go to 31 in the car in a 30. Anybody done that? <laughs> when I was in the RAF in Germany, I used to keep the German police in their beer. Yeah. <laughs> So we end up with a situation like this, don't we? Okay, so we think, oh, just had a brilliant time, a brilliant quiet time with the Lord, and I've gone and mucked it up already. Oh, I can't go back to him now. I'd be mad if I go back now. Oh, and the one thing we forget is God chooses to forget your sins. He says that in his word. I, I will remember your sins no more. Um, God knows everything that happened from day one to today. He knows what we've all done. He knows everything that's happened in our lives but he chooses to forget. So we've, we've just got ourselves right with God. We can go back to God and say, oh, God, uh, Lord, I've just done this. I've just said this or done that. Oh, dear, that's a bit of a slip up, isn't it? Well, I'm, you're sorry, and that's fine, and we'll, we'll call it quits. And it, it, it's as if it never happened before. Okay, but we, we're not like that. So we go into our life. We've got to work. We're not in that good a mood now. So we start getting involved in our day, and I'll deal with the sin. I'll, I'll just be really good at work and try and sort things out. Then we get, we're affected by somebody else. Something happens at work and we're affected by that and that adds to the mix and, oh dear, we don't react the right way. And we try to sort it all out, don't we? And we say, oh, I think I've done it now. I think I've done it. So here we are then. So there we are. So then we come up, the, so then we end up like that. So by sort of afternoon tea, you think, oh, I've had enough of this. And look at the state of me now. Look at the mess I'm in. Oh, I don't know if I can ever go back to God now. I don't know. And we might live like that for days and days and days because we've mucked our life up. And we think, oh, I can't do it. And the next day, the same thing happens again. And we can end up in a right mess, can't we? And we say, oh, here we go again. Mucking up my life again and <clears throat> done this, said that. That's happened. I didn't do that. I've not prayed for three days. I've not had my quiet time. I've not really read my Bible. Then we get, it, it just gets worse and worse, doesn't it? And we're on a spiral downward, aren't we? It's just not going to get any better, is it? And eventually, we get so desperate, we have to resort to prayer. We get that desperate. We, don't, we resort to prayer as a last resort. We should do that first, shouldn't we? Prayer as a first resort. So we go to the Lord and say, Lord, I know I've not spoke to you since Monday, but I've had a rotten week. Lots and lots of things. About, I'm in a right mess. Please, can you help me? So we, we have to go to Jesus. And we go to Jesus and we say, sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord, for all the things I've done wrong, for all the things I've said, for so-and-so who I upset. <clears throat> I won't rattle off the names of people I upset. There's too many on the list now. And God says, that's fine, my child. I forgive you because Jesus died for you. He's paid the price for all of your sins, past, present and future. And all you've got to do when you do wrong is come to me. Don't worry about the past. The past is the past. And I've re I choose to remember your sins no more. So it's like coming to me for the first time ever. And I will forgive you and I will cleanse you. So we go to God and we get sorted out. And we've got... Oh, we didn't do that at rehearsal. <laughs> and we've got our life back, haven't we? We get, we get our life back, Okay. You've got your life back and you're back to Monday morning again when everything was unkidory. 
So then you think, oh, I feel so much better, but I know so and so is not very happy with me at work, and I didn't do that job very well, and I messed up with that. Well, perhaps I can maybe try and make amends when I get to work. So when you get to work and you've been put right with God, all the things that were in your life that were going wrong, when you get involved with them again, everything gets put right. So even after you've been to God and you've got forgiveness and you, everything's right again, when you go back into your world, all the things that will annoy you, that all, the, all the trigger thing, trigger points I call them, that will make you sin or react, even they go away as well because God changes you. He changes you from the inside out so you can cope with all the things. That's still the same world you were in before that was all, all marred and messed up. But when you see it in, from God's perspective then we get the right view of it, don't we? Okay? So there's a couple of little scriptures to tell you. 1 John 1, 8 and 9, it says, If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, there's a warning here as well. So we started out okay, we messed up, we made a mess of our life and everybody involved in it. We went back to God and got, forgive, we got cleaned up and forgiven. We went back into our world and everything was unky-dory. Now, the problem with that is, that's great, but the problem is, Satan doesn't like that because he's been kicked out of your world. He's been pushed out because of your power and the Holy Spirit. So he go, it's like an evil spirit and he goes off wandering and when he can't find anywhere to go, it will go back to where it was before. So the same temptations are going to beset you just like they did before. And it's very easy. Satan knows your weak points and he'll prod at the weak point. But you've already said, you ain't get me there today, sunshine. I'm sorted, I'm covered. So he, he'll, he'll keep prodding, but then he'll leave it for a bit. And then a, a little off-the-cuff remark that somebody makes and for, no one, for some unknown reason, you just fly off the handle. And then Satan prods you again where it hurts and then you're back to square one. And there's a warning in the Bible about that in Matthew. Matthew chapter 12 and it says this. When, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they go in there and live there too. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. This is how it will be with this wicked generation. So it's not worth holding on to sins. If, if you sin, go and get it put right with God. If you have a quiet time each morning and you just seek God, it doesn't take ages, you just need a few minutes just to acknowledge God is your master today. And just put him in charge and seek to obey him and seek to follow him. And when these things happen, and they will, you can just go back, get forgiven, go back, get forgiven, when, and your world will be tidied up, and you'll grow, and you become stronger. We become more wise to what Satan's like and his schemes. But it, that's just a warning. If we don't, we have to be careful. It's like, um, it's like another example I can think of is, um, it's like people who go on uh, um, a weight control thing, right? Uh, a weight thing. Um, and like Slimmer will do a thing where you reach what they call a target. And you, can, you, you carry on following the plan and all that lot. You get all your, all your stuff and everything. When you get to your target, it's, it's a challenge to get there. But when you get to your target, that's actually really hard. That's a really hard place to be at because you've got to keep it. And you, 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 you've fought. You've fought the battle and you've won. And, and you, you've got there. Everything's unky-dory. That's when Satan can creep in. That's when things can start going wrong and you can end up in a worse condition. So we have to be spiritually aware. And the only way we can do that is by getting into the habit of seeking God every day. No matter what you've done, he will always forgive you. He will never let you down. He will never fail. He knows what we're like. That's why Jesus paid the whole price for everything. He's paid the price. So we have got the power there. We've just got to tap into it and claim it because it's, it's ours for the taking because of God's free gift.